To what extent does the online community negatively affect members in their everyday life? My claim is that some people are losing jobs while other people are trying to feel safe and cared for, but the online community is preventing their safety <clears throat> and comfort, and instead creating terror, addictions, and questioning amongst the higher ranks in this world. Now, every day, people are a part of the online community, whether they think they're a member of an online social media platform or not. Now, members of the online community can create many positive and negative events and consequences. However, the negative events and consequences are not being taken account of and taken care of altogether. Now, as you can see, the United States specifically has a 60 to 80 percent concentration of internet penetration. And for just the United States alone, we're one of the most developed countries in the world, and um, because of that development, that makes us um, highly internet penetrated. So social media was one of my perspectives, and social media has the greatest impact on online community members. When you think of the online community, the first thing you think of is sharing it with other people, which is mostly because of social media. Now, an, an article written by Edward Kessler, who was a leading thinker in the interfaith relations of primarily Jewish, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim relations. He stated that Kathy Sierra, an innocent bystander, was randomly targeted by an anonymous mob that posted disturbing images of her on various websites and was issued death threats. Somebody who could be your, very, your neighbor was issued death threats over social media and the online community, and this should not be happening as a um, as conclusion of a negative event. Now, um, a survey was taken of the adults in the United States uh, in 2018 of the social media platforms that adults use. Now, YouTube was 73%, and usually YouTube is one of those apps that you don't really um, intertwine yourself with other users. <coughs> However, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest were the following three that also had very high percentages in which people are interacting with one another all the time. Now, cyberbullying. This is a serious problem amongst people of all age, even adults who barely even use um, the online community. Issues and controversy states about cyberbullying is that there is a seemingly inability of parents and school administrators to recognize and stop cyberbullying before it's too late. Kathy Sierra was one of the victims of cyberbullying, and she was scared to leave her house, and that's how extreme that cyberbullying can get. Now, university students. Social media, back to university students, social media can, can change their lives for the worse, or for the better, but primarily the worst because they can become addicted and it become a serious problem for those who are going to create our future and careers. Now they may ignore the decline in their social circles because of the addiction and the decrease in their performances and profession will happen. Their daily lives are affected altogether and even their primary psychological needs and vital activities. Now speaking of addiction, um, in extreme cases, addiction can lead to a lower quality of life altogether, and this can affect family members of the addicted personnel, and then the co-workers and friendships, and especially the university students who will be creating our, our future. Now, some cases are eating disorders. It's mostly found in women because there are many um, online communities who create pages specifically for supermodels or athletes or just ways to like compare yourself. So it's mostly found against, found with women because women are usually those who will compare themselves to an online image that has probably been edited in some way. Now the counter argument is by Jane McGonigal who was um, an American game designer and she said that they can have stronger social relationships in games than they can have in real life. They get better feedback and feel more rewarded in games than they do in real life. Now in real life versus sitting in the basement alone, which would you choose? I would say that real life one simply because you're face to face with someone and that's back to old traditions. You're face to face with a person like I am to you. Now some solutions could be strict anonymity laws 
which can provide better ways to track down the cyber bullies and stop them. And the stricter anonymity laws can help boost the positive um, pages out there that are, do exist. So designated employees, this one um, does have some limitations, but it also has some rewards. Some limitations could be that um, the people who are who um, are the employees, they may struggle to ensure the positivity necessar necessary, and the employees will be used to ensure the positivity and ensure that there is no negativity throughout. Now, some rewards that the designated, designated employees could have would be to ensure more jobs for the online community, and by ensuring more jobs, there are more people who are um, less, I don't want to say less unemployed, but not unemployed. Um, and then the ter updated terms and conditions could be very helpful because there's already terms and conditions to most online communities, but the un updated terms and conditions could create new ways to ensure that there's positivity and ensure that the people who are cyberbullying and create negative consequences and effects are stopped and ended. And as a way, as, um, <coughs> In, oh my gosh. So, um, in conclusion, with all of these in place, there's definitely a way that we can ensure positivity and take down the negative imp impacts that the online community is providing. Okay, a couple of questions for you. What information did you need that you weren't able to find or locate? And then how did you go about trying to find that information? Um, so when I went to research, I was through, um, thoroughly looking through every single academic journal, and there were some ideas that popped up, like the university students. Um, it was originally just in Turkey, but I was able to research further and find the United States university students that were affected by the online community. Okay. Um, and then how did you go about trying to find that? Um, I looked through other research databases. Originally, I was simply an EBSCO host, so then I went to issues and controversies to so um, articles about cyberbullying amongst the university students. And then your second question, how does your conclusion respond to any of the other research or sources that you examined? How does my conclusion respond? Mm -hmm. um, well, basically, um, my conclusion allowed for the different sources to be answered and um, just counterclaimed because a couple sources that I had were for social media, as you can see by like the Jane McGonigal um, TED Talk. But the conclusion was able to counterclaim that and give solutions to her problems that she mentioned throughout the TED Talk. Okay.